Hey everybody, it's Mark Taylor Canfield here in Seattle for the MTC Report. I've been very busy lately, so I will be doing more videos, so stay tuned. Uh, I've been playing a lot of music, doing these great jams at the Central Saloon here in Seattle with amazing musicians like Aaron Jones, who toured with the Rolling Stones last year in Europe. Um, so we've been having a great time here, great uh, shows in Seattle. KEXP put on a great show at the Mural Amphitheater, another one of their free programs where I got to interview the guys in the band Spirit Award, which are a very interesting Seattle band. So more of that coming up, but for right now, I wanted to let you know, yes, I'm doing my journalism here in Seattle, the Emerald City, and I just saw the Democratic National Convention uh, live, and it was amazing, only because I've seen such a dichotomy, uh, such a, a different approach from the Democrats and the Republicans. The Republican Party seems to be talking about uh, dissension, fragmentation, uh, anger, retribution. <laughs> the Democrats seem to be talking about unity and working together, which is, if they win will probably be why. Uh, this message of unity is something that I think Americans like to hear. We are a very diverse culture in some ways, um, although they talked about the limitations to that also in the Democratic speeches by Michelle Obama and Barack Obama. Um, it's not always the easiest place to live if you're not in the majority. It doesn't always offer the opportunities that it promises, but we keep trying. And I think that's what people want to hear. They want to hear that we can work together as a nation and uh, join together with our strengths. Um, so that's just my opinion. I'm not speaking for anyone else. This is just Mark Taylor Canfo for the MTC Report. But here is an excerpt from Barack Obama's speech tonight. He and Michelle definitely went after Donald Trump called him a braggart and a bully and some other names. Um, but, you know, here's their message. And this is the reaction of the NBC crew, too, who is uh, broadcasting this live. And it seems like a pretty positive outcome for the Democrats. So I will let you decide. Here is Barack Obama's speech, at least an excerpt from it, speaking about unity at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. This is Mark Taylor Canfield for the MTC Report. Please hit the like button down there and subscribe for more ad-free videos on my YouTube channel, more of my music videos and journalism like this. So I hope you're all doing well and uh, stay tuned. The rest of the world is watching to see if we can actually pull this off. No nation no society has ever tried to build a democracy as big and as diverse as ours before. One that includes people that over decades have come from every corner of the globe. One where our allegiances and our community are defined not by race or blood, but by a common creed. And that's why when we uphold our values, the world's a little bright. When we don't, the world's a little dimmer, and dictators and autocrats feel emboldened, and over time we become less safe. We shouldn't be the world's policemen, and we can't eradicate every cruelty and injustice in the world, but America can be and must be a force for good. <laughs> Discouraging conflict, fighting disease, promoting human rights, protecting the planet from climate change, defending freedom, brokering peace. That's what Kamala Harris believes, and so do most Americans. Now, I... I... I, 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 I know these ideas can feel pretty naive right now. We live in a time of such confusion and rancor with a culture that puts a premium on things that don't last. Money, fame, status, likes. We chase the approval of strangers on our phones. We build all manner of walls and fences around ourselves, and then we wonder why we feel so alone. 
We don't trust each other as much because we don't take the time to know each other. And in that space between us, politicians and algorithms teach us to caricature each other and troll each other and fear each other. But here's the good news, Chicago. All across America, in big cities and small towns, away from all the noise, the ties that bind us together are still there. We still coach Little League and look out for our elderly neighbors. We still feed the hungry in churches and mosques and synagogues and temples. We share the same pride when our Olympic athletes compete for the gold. Because, because the vast majority of us do not want to live in a country that's bitter and divided. We want something better. We want to be better. And the joy and the excitement that we're seeing around this campaign tells us we're not alone. You know, I've spent a lot of time thinking about this these past few months because, as Michelle mentioned, uh, this summer we lost her mom, Ms. Marion Robinson. And I don't know that anybody has ever loved their mother-in-law any more than I love mine. And mostly it's because she was funny and wise and the least pretentious person I knew. That and she always defended me with Michelle when I messed up. <laughs> but I also think one of the reasons Mary and I became so close was she reminded me of my grandmother, the woman who helped raise me as a child. And on the surface, the two of them did not have a lot in common. One was a black woman from right here, south side of Chicago, right down the way. Went to Englewood High School. The other was a little old white lady born in a tiny town called Peru, Kansas. Now, I know there aren't that many people from Peru. And yet they shared a basic outlook on life. They were strong, smart, resourceful women, full of common sense, who regardless of the barriers they encountered, and women growing up in the 40s and 50s and 60s, they, they encountered barriers. They still went about their business without fuss or complaint and provided an unshakable foundation of love for their children and their grandchildren. In that sense, they both represented an entire generation of working people who through war and depression, discrimination and limited opportunity helped build this country. A lot of them toiled every day at jobs that were often too small for them and didn't pay a lot. They willingly went without just to keep a roof over the family's heads, just to give their children something better. But they knew what was true. They knew what mattered. Things like honesty and integrity, kindness and hard work. They weren't, they weren't impressed with braggarts or bullies. They, 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 they didn't think putting other people down lifted you up or made you strong. They didn't spend a lot of time obsessing about what they didn't have. Instead, they appreciated what they did. They, 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 they found pleasure in simple things, a card game with friends, a good meal, and laughter around the kitchen table. 
helping others, and most of all, seeing their children do things and go places that they would have never imagined for themselves. Whether you are a Democrat or a Republican or somewhere in between, we have all had people like that in our lives. People like Kamala's parents who crossed oceans because they believed in the promise of America. People like Tim's parents who taught him about the importance of service. Good, hardworking people who weren't famous or powerful, but who managed in countless ways to lead this country just a little bit better than they found it. As much as any policy or program, I believe that's what we yearn for. A return to an America where we work together and look out for each other. A restoration of what Lincoln called on the eve of civil war, our bonds of affection. An America that taps what he called the better angels of our nature. That is what this election is about. And I believe that's why if we each do our part over the next 77 days, if we knock on doors, if we make phone calls, if we talk to our friends, if we listen to our neighbors, if we work like we've never worked before, if we hold firm to our convictions, we will elect Kamala Harris as the next president of the United States, and Tim Walls as the next vice president of the United States. We will elect leaders up and down the ballot who will fight for the hopeful, forward-looking America we all believe in, and together we too will build a country that is more secure and more just, more equal, and more free. So let's get to work. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. A remarkable one-two punch from former President Obama and former First Lady Michelle Obama to an energized hometown crowd here in Chicago. The former president notably paying tribute to his former running mate and now President Biden, but both Obamas making forceful cases for Vice President Harris directly going after former President Trump, not holding back. In many ways, you could argue, Savannah, that what we heard from Barack Obama there was really, at times, while going after Trump, really an appeal to the middle. These were two different speeches, and yet they were bookends to an argument for a return to American ideal that the Obamas argued has been lost in our recent politics. Michelle Obama started out by saying, hope is making a comeback. Of course, Barack Obama was the candidate so famous for saying hope and change. And he, he went out there and gave... Uh, an endorsement of Kamala Harris, an indictment of Donald Trump. But most, most crucially, I think he was arguing for a hopeful future, one where Americans, though they may feel divided or feel that they can't agree, that they could still live together in peace and harmony. And I think that was, Kristen, uh, what he was trying to do tonight.